Just a few years ago, Sean Rash was the next great thing in bowling, but he hasn't celebrated a title since 07. There will never be another like Earl Anthony. His 43 titles and 10 major victories solidified his name in bowling's history books. Anthony. Earl Anthony. Though the legend has been gone for nearly a decade, he still cast a long shadow over the sport. Last season, he was voted the number one player of all time, and the respect from his peers and admirers lives on. He's a superstar. He was, he was an amazing person. It was an honor to know him. He is the best that will ever step on a lane. He was the man. He was the man. Today, the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour returns to Earl's house, Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl, for a tournament that honors his great legacy. And we welcome you to the Bay Area and Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl, where today we roll in memory of the greatest bowler to ever grace this game. Coming up on the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic, we begin with a pair of men's semifinals. Sean Rash tries to end a rough patch on television. He'll take on Mike Lechuga, who's seeking his third career PBA Tour title. Non-exempt player T-Money, Anthony LaCause, will duel Mike Wolf, who's in pursuit of his fifth career title, but that's not all. It's the final event of the PBA Women's Series, presented by Bowl.com, the better half of the Barnes family, Linda Barnes, taking on Stephanie Nation in our final singles event of the PBA Women's Series this season. And good morning to you from the West Coast. Rob Stone joined by 13-time titleist Randy Peterson. Good crowd here behind us in the Bay Area. Next week, we're in Las Vegas for the second major of the season, the Tournament of Champions. This week, a wonderful tune-up event, challenging lane conditions, and some really passionate personal stories. We begin with Sean Rash. This kid burst onto the scene in a big way. Since then, you get the sense, Randy, his ego a little bit dented. Yeah, he really has. You know, he started out great winning his first seven matches on television, but it's been a big struggle ever since. He's lost his last four, including two giveaways at the World Series of Bowling. He says, Rob, Randy, I've got some demons. I've got some real demons. He says, all I want to do is go out to and prove to everyone that I'm still a great player out here. You know, with a win today, he can exercise a lot of those demons. Yeah, he says he's bowling with a little bit of a chip this week on his shoulder. Speaking of bowling with a chip on your shoulder, how about Anthony LaCause, a non-exempt bowler? So every week he has to go through the tour qualifying rounds just to roll with the big boys, just to get a chance to be on TV. You get the sense this kid belongs. Well, he, he really does. You know, he's no flash in the pan, making his second telecast in as many years in a very young career. He beat the number one seed of this event, Tommy Jones, to make it to, to the telecast. Took Tommy Jones in seven games. You know, he's got game, but the other thing that I really like about Anthony LaCause is I think he's got the attitude to win out here. He said, you know what? I respect everyone out here, but I fear no one. He also said, I'll see you guys next week at the TOC. A win here by LaCause. He is invited to the Tournament of Champions. We take a look at today's bracket and uh, we begin with Sean Rash, who fought through Jason Belmonte in the round of eight. Ryan Schaefer falling to Machuga. Tommy Jones losing to LaCause. And Mike Wolf shutting out Stevie Weber. All of those in the quarterfinals. He owns two Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour titles and one PBA Regional title from Erie, PA. Please welcome Chugs, Michael Machuga. <laughs> Machuga making back-to-back -back telecast after finishing fifth in the Pepsi Red, White, and Blue Open in Wichita, Kansas. Won last year's Chameleon Championship in Taylor, Michigan. <laughs> Start with the Brooklyn. He's battling some real bad wrist issues. All right. First one's out. 
a four-time winner, including one major at the 2007 USBC Masters, and a four-time member of Team USA from Wichita, Kansas. Please welcome Sean Rash. Sean made three shows last season, two singles, one double, but did not win a title. Again, started his career 7-0 and on television. He has now lost his last four matches under the lights. Boy, and sometimes the sport of bowling can be cruel. Mike Machuga throws a bad shot, gets away with the Brooklyn. Sean Rash comes back, throws a really good shot, only to leave a solid nine. But his last two outings were, were, I think, the turning point with Sean's attitude. Where have we seen that before? Uh. Issues at the World Series of Bowling earlier this season, the Chameleon Championship. How do you do that? Hey. Here's the 710. Just things we don't normally see from Sean. And he opens up by missing the nine pin and has an open frame in the first. Here he is in the second. <laughs> Finds the pocket, drops them all. Good bounce back ball from Rack. Well, you, you really got to ask yourself what's going through Sean Rash's mind when he steps up and whiffs another s single pin spare on television. Now he said, you know, I'm having problems staying focused, being confident, having fun out on the lanes. I'm too busy trying to prove people wrong. Too busy bowling with that chip on his shoulder. Th these are direct quotes from Sean. Here's Machuga, who went Brooklyn in the first. Still a little heavy on that one. Leaves the 6'10". When this oil pattern this week played predominantly in because of the amount of hook in the center part of the lane, there was a couple of players like Mike Wolf, Mike Machuga that did try to chase it a little bit farther right. But the majority of the players played in. Time now for our lumber liquidators. Know the wood. It's the Earl Anthony pattern this week. Very flat pattern, which means? Well, hang on, I'll get to that. But I got something else for you. Oh, carry Guess on. what? New for 2010, a brand new lane oil for the players, the new Brunswick Connect oil, designed for low friction surfaces. But you're right, 40 feet in length, very flat. And it basically the way the lanes played was the middle, middle part of the lane just caved in. An oil pattern Earl Anthony would be very proud of. Strike, spare, strike for Machuga through three. First frame hitters. This oil pattern really puts, us, puts an emphasis on shot making. And that was Earl Anthony's forte. Nobody made better shots than Earl did. Sean Rash, this is sixth top 20 finish of the season, third in the top five, entered with the 10th best average on the tournament coming into the week. <laughs> well, all three balls in the pocket, stone nine, the first frame on the right lane, really and now the, the week 10, Sean Rash is hitting the pocket. He's just got to keep it together mentally. He can get to the pocket, his shot looks good, and he loves playing that deep inside line. Takes care of that single spare. Won this tournament when it was held in Medford, Oregon during the 06 spare on TV. season. You know, Rob, it's one thing to lose on television, on television or get beat when your opponent just out bowls you. It's another to, to give them away by missing spares, by making bad shots, by throwing away count. That's what's happened to Sean Rash his last two times out. Spare strike, spare strike for Sean Rash. Open frame, rather, in the first. But when we return, we'll tell you why Mike Machuga almost, almost didn't bowl this week when we return for the conclusion of a semifinal battle with Sean Rash. PBA Earl Anthony Memorial Classic is brought to you by Lumber Liquidators, hardwood flooring for less. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Bear Aspirin, expect wonders. And by the United States Bowling Congress, the 
theallnewbowl.com, your online source for all things bowling. Log on to bowl.com today. While we're gone, Mike Machuga missed the head pin in the fourth, able to clean up the spare, struck in the fifth. Sean Rash left the 10 pin in the fifth, knocked that one down for a spare, and now we begin the sixth frame. Rash down 11. Double wood. Just a little aggressive on that shot, and that caused the ball to skate just to pinch down the lane, leaving the 2-8. The last five shots prior to that were all perfect, and he can't double yet. And because of the missed nine pin in the first frame, he finds himself trailing by 13. And Sean Rash joins us now, courtesy of the PBA Inside Angle. And Sean, what are you seeing out there that's giving you some issues? Uh, so far, the carry on the right lane hasn't been very good. Uh, bowled a pretty good game so far and just trying to stay close. Machuga, bottom of the sixth, up 13. Well, and you can see not a lot of room for error playing that outside part of the lane. Mike Machuga doesn't miss by a lot here. You can see the change in his time. He's made a big change, delaying the push away, making his timing a little bit, er, er, excuse me, a little bit later. He felt like his timing was real early. Oh my God. <laughs> and really likes what he's doing now, making back-to-back -back shows, Rob. I think it's the right change for him. Now Mike Machuga almost didn't bowl this week. A right wrist issue almost had him withdraw from the tournament. I almost WD'd in the sixth game of the first day. I just was pulling it apart, just trying to relieve some pressure, and it, and it, and it popped, and something moved. And all of a sudden, I got my range of motion back. It's still pretty tender, but I think something was just out of place in there. I don't know if it was a tendon on a nerve or a bone was out of place or what, but something moved, and it relieved a lot of pressure. So hopefully it continues to get better. Strike there in the seventh, and you know, Mike trying to figure out with us. He's like, I don't know what triggered it. I don't know what brought it on. All I could think of was, might have been a snow shoveling injury that he <laughs> suffered back home. And you know, it's, you know, as, as you start to age, the little things you do that you don't think about end up haunting you the next day. That's why you always got to have that Advil handy. Yeah, plus when you're shoveling 12 feet of snow in Erie, Pennsylvania, yeah. that's not good for the wrist. Oh, this is not Rash's day right now. <laughs> And it's just pin carry on the right lane. That ball is just a little bit high. Leaves Pretty the good. four pin. Left a solid nine in the first, a 10 pin in the third, another 10 pin in the fifth, and now a four pin. No strikes for Sean Rash on the right lane. <laughs> you know, usually on a, a really tough man and rail pattern, you, you're trying to just keep the ball in play, and Sean is doing a great job of that. But with no pin carry, it's going to be tough for him to get back in the match unless Mike Machuga makes a mistake. We remind you to head on over to PBA.com right now. Submit your more of what matters to you fan question. The question is sponsored by One A Day. It can be directed to one of our finalists or to you and I, huh. to the announced team. Love if selected, it. your name and question will be read live and answered during today's telecast. Be smart and be original. Still seeking that third strike of the semifinal match, and this one may be a lost cause for Rash. Oh, nice. Well, I, I disagree with you, partner. I, I, th I think he's got plenty of time based on how tough the oil pattern is. Even though he's down by 15, there's still two frames to go. He needs a spare here. He can still strike out for 205. He had a little bit of a footing issue there when he let go of that shot. He's hitting the pocket on the right lane, and anything can happen on this oil pattern. Mike Machuga's Come clean, on. strike spare, strike spare through seven frames, but that doesn't mean that Sean Rash is out of this match. One errant shot can spell an open frame. And Machuga has yet to pair any strikes together. Machuga's last title came at the last season's Chameleon Championship, began with a TV win over Sean Rash. Way 
right. Like that, that, was a, that was a lion shot. Yeah. You know you know what the lion shot is, right, Rob? If he tells you he threw this one good, he's lying. This is wide right, and he's lucky to get eight. I mean, that is a huge break. And again, remember what I said. One errant shot can make the difference in this match. So Machuga remains clean. Here in our first semifinal, semi number two coming up next. Mike Wolf taking on Anthony Lacause. And it's been all on the left lane for Machuga so far, flawless. And that is where he is right now in the ninth as we begin the foundation frame. The lead at 15 for Machuga. Brooklyn, his second Brooklyn strike of the day. Boy, and right now, Mike Machuga's like a sprinkler. He's just throwing the ball everywhere and really fortunate to have a 15-pin lead. He's got to finish on the right lane, the lane that he has not yet struck on. Sean Rash now on the right lane, a lane he has not struck on. His two strikes both coming in the left lane and coming in the second and the fourth frames. Another four pin. Well, if you're Sean Rash right now, you gotta tell yourself, okay, let me make the spare here, strike out in the 10th frame and make Mike Machuga mark on a right lane that he's been very suspect on. And he missed. His second single pin spare miss of Hold the day. a really day. good game to lose like that. I mean, when he loses, he does it in dramatic fashion. It, it, it's just inexplicable, the missed single pin spares. Did not miss a single pin spare in match play all week and misses two on television. That's all mental. You gotta find him a sports psychologist to, to up his winnings. Send him to me. I'll, t I'll take care of it. <laughs> I'm not sure I trust anybody's brain with you, my friend. <laughs> there you go, two in a row now. <laughs> Come on, you set yourself up for that one, buddy. Oh. All right, all right, we'll send Rash your way. I can help. I give the games you. away. Kid's got a lot of talent, obviously. And, and you know what? It, to his defense, I mean, he did start off winning his first seven matches on television. He starts to feel he's invincible, mm -hmm. can't lose. And you know that's not going to last forever. But he's only lost his last four matches. It's not like all of a sudden, you know, the bottom just fell out of it. He's still 7-4, and four, now 7-5. and five. But it's the missed single pin spares and throwing. This might be the worst. Throwing the ball kind of all over the place. Although in this match he did bowl a pretty good game, but the single miss pin, the single pin misses, inexcusable. You, you cannot have that at this level. You can't it, you can't and expect to win? No, not a shot. So Machuga will move on to the title match. Despite what is going on here in the tenth, and despite his bewildered look. Despite his less than stellar play, a 188 is going to be enough to take care of Sean Rash. So, Machuga moves on 188, 183, semi number two. Coming up when we return, Mike Wolf taking on Anthony Lacoste. Earl Anthony has climbed to greater heights by winning his 30th PBA title and his second Firestone Tournament of Champions win. And Earl, congratulations. Thank you, Chris. Boy, this is a thrill, I'll tell you. This is going to be my all-time biggest thrill, I think, in bowling. The legendary Earl Anthony stands out as one of the many big names to take home the Tournament of Champions trophy. Each year, only the best of the best are invited to this coveted major. This star-studded event features the winners of not only the past year's PBA tournaments, but includes the best seniors, women, and PBA Hall of Fame members. Watch to see if media darling Tom Smallwood can continue his winning ways in his first ever TOC appearance. You can see it all right here on ESPN next Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, coming your way live from Red Rocks Casino in Las Vegas. Tom Smallwood was scheduled to join us here live today.
fallen ill, so we'll look forward to seeing Tom Smallwood next week in Las Vegas. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson back here with you in Dublin, California. We said that the Zero Anthony oil pattern was going to be challenging. You saw it in semifinal number one. What are you seeing from it right now? I think the inside part of the lane is going to play the best. Uh, Mike Machuga, he showed just how difficult it was to play right of that big dry hump area in the middle. You got to get way in, you got to make good shots, but you got to make spares. You know, one of the keys to grinding it out when they're tough is keeping the pocket in front of you, avoiding splits, and making spares. All right, time now for semifinal number two. Anthony Lacoste taking on Mike Wolf. He is looking for his first Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title, making his second TV appearance from Melrose Park, Illinois. Please welcome Anthony Lacoste. The kids in the know call him T-Money. You love that, don't you? Uh, absolutely. I, I more than love it. I think I borderline adore it. His buddies in Franklin Park, Illinois, at Dave Worth's house right now are kicking back on the patio. They got the space heaters going, the couches, the fridge, the six TVs to watch their boy, T-Money, bowl for the money. Leaves the 10 pin. One of the reasons why I think he's got a lot of talent is because, you know, anybody can make one show on an easy oil pattern. You know, you get lucky, you have a good week or a career week. Anthony, Anthony Lacoste making his second telecast, but he makes it on a very demanding oil pattern. That just tells me he's got game. And he's got some help this week, too. He takes care of the 10. You know, we saw him last season. He was at the Lake City Indiana Golden Anniversary Championship. Took on... His really good buddy, Bill O'Neill, lost in that match. You know, they bowled together, they're uh, lifelong friends. And, and Anthony telling us yesterday, like, you know, it was, it was kind of mean, you know. He was expecting a little more warmth from his buddy. Hey, man, you're out here bowling. A four-time winner on tour with five PBA regional victories from New Albany, Indiana. Please welcome Mike Wolf. <laughs> but this week, Lacoste has Bill O'Neill on his side, helping him do a little scouting as we warm up. Here is Mike Wolf native of New Albany, Indiana, seeking his fifth Lumber Liquidator PBA Tour title. That may have been the prettiest shot we've seen all day. How about Mike Wolf playing the outside part of the lane? He did that. He played way in through qualifying and match play. He said, I just threw it 100 miles an hour up first arrow. But I call this guy the cyborg. That's my nickname for Mike Wolf because it's just businesslike. He reminds me a lot of Earl Anthony on the lanes in that respect. Not a lot of hooping it up, not a lot of showboating, just business. This guy, when he gets it going, he's tough as nails, and he's made a big adjustment in his game. He's gone from five steps to four. And look how smooth his arm swing looks now. Right through the shots. Time to pray at the Greek church. Gets it left of target and pays the ultimate price leaving the Greek church. He does the smart thing and just gets counted. So, again, that just shows you how sensitive the oil pattern is. And I think what happened on that shot, Rob, was that to his right on the practice pair, one of the guys practicing, probably Mike Machuga, caught him in his third or fourth step. He gave it a look over there after he left the Greek church. First strike of the match for the 27-year-old from Melrose Park, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Here's how he got here. Went through Mitch Beasley, and Haas, PA, Patrick Allen, and then <laughs> Tommy Jones, who was really your tournament leader pretty much all week. Yeah, Tommy Jones dominated the event through qualifying, and Anthony had Tommy Jones down 3-1. Tommy came storming back before Anthony finally put him away in the seventh and final game. 
Still seeking a pair of strikes thrown by one of our men's semifinals. Well, that's twice through the nose on that same lane. Anthony Lacaz will make an adjustment. He'll move deeper, farther left on the lane, try to get that ball to lay off and hit the 1-3 pocket. Right now, trying to avoid an open frame. Not the easiest spare on tour to convert, the 3-6-10, but you want to make it harder, throw the 9-pin in there. Just for good measure. Oh. What did we talk about in our on-camera? Mm -hmm. Making spares, staying clean, avoid the open frames, grind them out. I think that was... Earl Anthony's forte, kind of his mantra. It's kind of like a running game approach right now in the NFL. Exactly Can't right. Get your yeah. running game going. Your hose. So who's Wolf strike in the first, open frame in the second. Who's going to dominate the line? It's all about the hogs. Right, right now, it's the four, it's the uh, foul line. Here's the ten pin open frame for Wolf. I agree. Tonight, division rivals square off in Denver. It's your NBA destination on ESPN, Chauncey Phillips, Carmelo Anthony, the Nuggets, finally healthy. They take on Carlos Boozer from the Jazz. NBA Special Edition on ESPN and ESPN360.com tonight at 9 Eastern. Takes care of the 10 there. So the Wolf, strike, open frame, spare. So we begin the fourth. All even. Had a bye in the round of 28. Took down Mike Devaney 4-1 and then shut out Stevie Weber. Losing only once. And our top four players through qualifying receive a bye in the first round. Mike Wolf was the number four seed. Well, that was always the toughest thing for me is when you were bowling on a difficult oil pattern and you were making really good shots and you were getting to the pocket, the pins weren't cooperating and you weren't striking because what makes it difficult is, all right, now you go, well, what kind of adjustment do I make to try to carry the corners? And if I'm wrong, I could go from nine spare to big giant splits and open frames. And you start overthinking things. Oh, God. And he misses. Dude, how many single pin spares have we seen already? Missed. Three? My goodness. Slide on one, you slip on the other. So, when we return, team money, Anthony Lacaz steps up in the fourth. He's got a 12 pin lead through three and a half. I always remember Earl from the 70s when he first started dominating on the tour, uh, playing different angles on the lanes that other lefties couldn't play. Earl Anthony is the, one of the greatest bowlers in the world, and he, he's totally missed. We welcome you back to Dublin, California, our continuing coverage of the second semifinal between Mike Wolf and Anthony Lacaz. While we were gone, Lacaz a strike in the fourth, spare in the fifth. Mike Wolf just spared. In the fifth, here he is in the sixth. His second strike of the match, yeah. It's going to be a grinded out kind of day between the bowlers, the broadcasters, everybody, the fans. I mean, this is not going to be Drew Brees airing it out and chucking a lot of touchdowns. This is going to be some, some banging on the line and some uh, spares that need to be picked up. Yeah, the, the gloves are off now. This, this is just bare knuckles, full brawl, no... No holds barred. I mean, it's time to just suck it up and make good shots. Take your opponent out. Lacaz in the sixth. On the right lane, both of his strikes have come on that right lane. <laughs> Nothing really standing out like, uh, hey, I, you know, I think I found the right line. I think I'm going to take over this match. Time to start putting some strikes together. We're still looking for our first double. Tough, tough oil pattern, but some key mistakes. 
in the form of missed spares. We're looking for our first double all day, not just this match. And only three strikes all day on the right lane. So a pair of spares for the cause, in the fifth and the sixth. Open frame in the third for him. Wolf with an open frame in the second. Lacaz up 11. We begin the seventh. Well, and you can see that Anthony is chasing the oil in, but you heard him say hook. He got that shot just a little bit wide and lucky to only leave the two, four, five. This oil pattern, instead of being kind of tris Christmas treed in down, down the lane, it actually spreads out. And so what happens is when the players move in and they start to open the lane up, if they get it an inch too far to the right, it hits a big splotch of oil and it's gonna hang all day long. Crucial to make shots, your speed's gotta be perfect and you better hit your target. So what's your advice, Sydney? Well, I, personally, I don't like the outside look. I think it's too sensitive, but also I think when you make a mistake playing the outside line, I think the consequences are disastrous. I think if you're playing in and you make a little bit of a mistake or you, you, you miss a board or two, I still think you'll leave yourself something you can make. When you miss from the outside part of the lane, it's through the nose for a Greek church like Mike Wolf did in the second. You miss a little bit wide and it's going to be a washout. Boy, that was huge because Mike was working on a strike. He could have doubled up right there and taken the lead. Solid eight. The worst break in bowling next to a pocket 7-10 for a right-hander. Watch this. Ball goes right by the eight pin. Boy, that's just like getting punched in the stomach really hard. Mike Wolf backs off on this one. Sage move. Now you have got to be comfortable out here today because this one is a battle between the ears as well. These one pin spares are freaking people out today. They are freaking them out. Uh, I, again, I, I think that's a mistake, especially on a tough oil pattern. When you try to hook the ball at a single pin spare, I think you should just throw it straight. The match is close. He, he tries to hook this ball at that spare, misses a fraction to the right, and never makes it back. Fourth single pin spare missed today. And we're not even through our second men's semifinal. Still to come, the women. PBA Women's Series presented by Bowl.com. Linda Barnes taking on Stephanie Nation. Oh, they must be loving these highlights right now. There you go, Wolfie. And with all intents and purposes, that should be three in a row. Right. But it's not. And the failure to convert the single pin spare in the seventh frame after he leaves a solid eight puts him 20 back. This is a bizarro day right now. Because non-exempt player from outside of Chicago. His wife is here. His dad is here. His sister is here. Let's see if he can move on to the title game up 20. come on I got to tell you Rob in all my experience bowling on tour and doing television the events that I've been a part of and watched like this this is when a guy like Anthony Lacaz wins these type of events grind out ugly And all of, a, all of a sudden, this guy just does the right things. He makes the right moves. He makes good shots, gets a couple of breaks, and finds himself holding the winner's check and trophy. He takes care of that. We see what pin spare conversions are going to be a big part of the day. We're not going to see a whole lot of 200s today. We'll be lucky if we see one at this rate. A cause, just two strikes. 
an open frame in the third. But up 19 as we begin the foundation frame. He is on that left lane, and that has been the lane that has given everybody issues, except for Mike Wolf all of a sudden. Take that back. It's the left lane that everybody has been loving. It's the right lane that has been an absolute fiend. Alea Lacoste. Are you sure? Alea. Okay. Yes, apparently I mispronounced her first name uh, when he was on television last week, and he reminded me that Alea was none too pleased. I want to keep her happy. As you should. As, as, does, as does T Money. Mike Wolf. Must strike situation now, working on one strike. He can strike out for 192. Anthony Lacaz going at a 181 pace. Smooth roll. Gets them all the crowd on the right lane. So two strikes on the right, two strikes on the left for Wolf. Huge time for that strike. Yeah, but even bigger now, 10th frame. Three strikes here in the 10th frame. He will force Anthony Lacaz to throw two to beat him. That solid eight pin, seventh frame, looming large. Lead at nine for Lacaze. Wolf on the left lane to begin the tenth. Has struck twice this match on that left lane. Anthony Lacaz is going to bowl for the title. A you. little bit left of target, not a lot. May have grabbed it a pinch with his hand, right oh, through the face. And there's the penalty. 4-10 split. What could have been, if only for a solid eight pin, oh. in the seventh frame. I've been on the other side of that. I know what that's like, no fun. You know, you see it on the facial expressions of the bowlers. And you hear it from the crowd, you know, a couple frames ago, after Michael Wolf missed that single pin spare, you heard the crowd just kind of say, all right, let's start clapping here. Let's get these guys back into it. Let's pick it up. This is a tough day. But Lacoste will take it. Four pins to move on to the title match. Team money moves on. Yeah, and you know what, Rob? He's lined up now. He's got the left lane. He's playing the right lane completely different. Look out, Mike Machuga. Remember what I said. These are the kind of days where a guy like Anthony Lacaz, a non-winner, it's the kind of day where they end up holding that trophy for the first time. It'll be Lacaz's first title match and just his second ever televised appearance. Remember, he said he was going to be at the Tournament of Champions next week. And not just a gamble. And if he wins, he'll knock out Eric Forkel. I really like what Mike Wolf has done with the change in his game, going from five to four steps. Just a couple of mental errors today. Otherwise, he's bowling for, for the title. But, you know, we talked about it in the first match. You miss single pin spares. Guess what? It's going to come back to haunt you. And that's the exact difference in this match, really. That, that solid eight pin. So our men's final is set, Mike Machuga versus Anthony Lacaz. But first, it's our women's title match. Linda Barnes stepping on to the floor. Take on Stephanie Nation. Anthony Memorial Classic is brought to you by Hammer. Hammer Bowling, nothing hits like a hammer. By Vice, Vice Insert, the choice of champions. It doesn't get any better. By Motus, high performance bowling equipment with a fresh perspective, get motivated. And by Barbasol, enjoy the rush, America. New Barbasol Pacific Rush Shaving Cream. We welcome you back to ESPN's continuing coverage of the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic coming your way live from the Dublin Bowl in Dublin, California, just outside of Oakland. It's time now for our women's title match presented by Bowl.com. Stephanie Nation taking on Linda Barnes. 
She owns one PBA Women's Series title, is a four-time member of Team USA from Grand Prairie, Texas. She's the nation sensation. Please welcome Stephanie Nation. Nation was down 3-0 to Shannon Fluhowski in the semifinals, rallied to win four straight to move on to make her first TV show of the season. What oil issue? What lane problems? <laughs> Gets the late kick on the 10 to his nation and takes a seat. Here comes Linda Barnes. The winner of one PBA Women's Series title, 98 and 08, USBC Queens champion and 12-time member of Team USA from Double Oak, Texas. Welcome the better half, Linda Barnes. By the way, between you and me, I absolutely love the nickname, the better Be half. Better half? Yeah. How's, how's that sitting with Chris? I love it. I absolutely love it. And just the start you want when you're bowling on a tough oil pattern. You know, strikes are hard to come by. There's her husband, Chris. I think you have to play both lanes completely different. And I think that Anthony Lacaz showed that in the last match. Play in on the left lane, play closer to second arrow on the right lane. Uh -oh. <laughs> Shake it off, get it out of your system. Tighten up those laces, throw a strike on the left lane. Hey, Linda, listening and seeing what happened with the two men's semifinals, how is that affecting you as you come out here to start your title match? Uh, it's generated a little bit of confusion. We're uh, just going to try and settle down and make good shots. We thank Linda for joining us, courtesy of PBA Inside Angle. As she gets set to start the second after an open frame nine in the first. And you can see right away that Linda's playing the lanes the correct way. She's farther left on the left lane, a little bit straighter and farther right on the right lane. Now it's just a matter of dialing it in and making the right shot. Nice break here, only leaving the 4-7. Let's cover the spare. And breathe. And breathe. Spares are your friend today. Spares are a must today. A necessity. Open frame spare for Barnes. Up now, Stephanie Nation. Her birthday was on Monday. Turned 26. I remember turning 26. I remember it like it was yesterday. Right. You and me both, buddy. Hard to believe Stephanie didn't make a cut at the World Series of Bowling. Mm -hmm. Not one cut. Her best finish till this week was 13th. back wasn't pretty but it was effective we remind you to head on over to pba.com right now submit your more of what matters to you fan question and that question sponsored by the good folks at one a day will be directed to randy and i'll take a question i'll take a question as well if, if need be <laughs> if i have to step in and take a question i will but send us a question right now over on pba.com click on the one a day logo and fire off a question to us and we will answer it in our broadcast today. Well, we have yet to see a three-bagger today. We should just celebrate a pair of strikes, to be honest with you. It's only happened how many times today? Twice? Three times? Sean Rash had a three-bagger to close out, and he was already done. You see Stephanie Nation has got a little bit, a little added arsenal to her game. She looks like she's trying to rotate around the side of the ball a little bit more. Not known for being a deep inside player, likes to go straight and direct. Me too. You can see there's a little bit different rotation at the point of release for Stephanie Nation. She gets a spare in the third. We remind you the men's title match coming up a little bit later. And you'll see that in its entirety. 
Mike Machuga taking on Anthony LaCause as we continue our coverage here the PBA Women's Series presented by Bowl.com. Title match here at the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. Barnes down 19. <laughs> Oof. And that's one of those shots you're talking about, Randy, right? It's everything was fine. You just didn't get them all to drop. Relax. Yeah, and that's okay. A, a little deeper inside line than her first shot on that lane as she defeated Lindsey Baker and Jody Wessner to make the telecast. And I was talking to Linda while she was practicing earlier today, and I said, well, what happens if you start leaving those week 10s? She says, you know what? I'm just gonna try to tip it a little bit more or try to add a little bit more side roll. Her last outing on television, she said, you know what? I flat out chose the wrong bowling ball. I didn't use the right ball. Even though she got to the pocket a lot, her carry was miserable. She says, if I see that again today, I'm just gonna start tipping it a little bit more. Her husband, Chris, felt guilty saying he felt like he talked me into the wrong ball there at the Viper Championship at the World Series of Bowling. Coming up after this one, our men's title match, Machuga Lacause. Carry it. Uh, hit it. Mm. <laughs> All right. The messenger didn't take its one a day. Well, that was a leaner. You know, she was looking for the little tomahawk 10 there. Didn't happen. Both balls in the, both, or the last two shots in the pocket, see how it goes to the, to the channel there, kind of leans on it, just not hard enough. But Bless again, you. that's another w week 10. Look for Linda to start making some adjustments with the hand position to try to tilt that ball a little bit more and get it to hook a little harder down the lane. Well, we'll tell you why it's nice to have Chris Barnes in your corner, but Randy, it's even sweeter to ignore his advice when ESPN's live coverage of the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic returns. Linda Barnes down 18 in the title match of the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. Here she is. Fifth, still seeking a strike. While we were gone, Stephanie Nation in the fourth with an eight spare and then a nine spare. And here is Barnes trying to clean up, take care of the three pin here in the fifth. the 
final singles event in the 09-10 PBA Women's Series presented by Bowl.com. The winner will advance to the Women's Series Showdown coming your way in mid-April from the USBC Training Facility in Arlington, Texas. It'll be an easy road trip for both Nation and Barnes. Nation works there at that facility. Barnes also from Texas. Uh, do something. How about a Brooklyn? Didn't like it. But I tell you what, everybody should start throwing Brooklyn's today. That's where you got your <laughs> best shot at winning. <laughs> Uh, nobody that's, Rob's, that's Rob's advice. Nobody likes to win with a Brooklyn. I'll take it. Are you kidding me? Well, that's, you know, after leaving back-to-back -back flat 10, she tries to make an adjustment, get a little bit more hand in it, and unfortunately crosses over. But, you know, good break catching the Brooklyn. She needs a couple of those to get back into this match, trailing by 19. Well, Nation spares in the third, fourth, and fifth. She's clean, but hasn't struck since she opened up with the pair. Here is a big opening for Linda Barnes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about, one mistake could spell disaster, and there it is. Three, six, seven. She's going to try to get the ball to the right side of the three pin, slide it over into the seven. The ball will take out the six. See, just like I said, just look at the uh, spare maker there. Not too far off target, but open frame now for Nation. Randy, do you have the keys or do I have the keys? You, you, have, the, you have the keys, have boss. Keys. All right, let me fire up the Go RV and on the road. Next week, we take our act to Red Rock Lanes in Las Vegas, the TOC. Live coverage on ESPN at 1 Eastern. The following week, we're over on ESPN 2 from the Fountain Bowl in Fountain Valley, California, just south of LAX, right in between LA and Orange County for the One A Day Dick Weber Open. And I was on the roster for the TSC until, uh, until about six weeks ago when I had my knee cut on. Nation skims the head pin. I, and I'm, I'm confused because I thought in the rule book that there was the line that by the broadcasting reciprocal property, I, I was able to fill in for you. That's that's a new rule, too. Yeah. I, I've never heard that rule. I like to make things up in the bowling. Apparently. World. I don't know if you've heard that. Apparently. But, you know, the Red Rock is such a great facility, mm -hmm. and, and I love the Tournament of Champions. Made, you know, a couple of shows there and um, at the TSC, and I, I just love the venue. I love the event, and, and it was, you know, I tried to rehab and get back into shape, but and he just won't let me be a part of it this year. Maybe next year. Good pick up there by Nation in the seventh. Maybe he leads by five. An opportunity now, though, for Linda Barnes to take the lead. All the NFL's top stars are on one stage the Sunday before the Super Bowl this year, Randy. Interesting, and yeah. it's not in Honolulu. Mm -mm. McDonald's presents the 2010 Pro Bowl on ESPN Sunday, January 31st. Coverage begins with Sunday NFL Countdown for 5.30 Eastern. I could hear that music all day. By the way. How about another Brooklyn? I told you, come on, Wobble! Wow. Mm. <laughs> Looking for no, another Brook for a double. <laughs> We've got a five-pin match. Linda is having trouble getting the ball to the pocket now. That one up and saw earlier one of the patches on Linda's jersey, JDRF, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And once her and Chris discovered that one of their sons, Troy, was suffering juvenile diabetes, those two quickly jumped on board. The Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is something we've been involved in the last year. Um, Troy, our son, was diagnosed about a year and a half ago. And um, we've been trying to help out raising funds. We have a website, um, strikeoutdiabetes.org. You can donate there. And uh, we're doing our best to try and find a cure so that no child has to suffer through five to seven pin pricks a day and living based off of their insulin intake. So we're doing all we can to try and help that organization raise money. Finally, some energy in this crowd here. The Strikeout Diabetes fundraiser by the Barnes has raised over $12,000 so far. More 
events planned in the near future. Here is Nation, bottom of the eight, up five, working on a spare. Business picking up now. And just at the right time, eighth, ninth, and tenth frame. Who's going to make the shot? Who's going to get the ball to the one three pocket? Who's going to carry all ten? Both players working on strikes, eighth frame, five pin match. Nation now on the left lane. One of her three strikes coming there. She will close out on the right. Way right of target. Way to hit your ankle there, buddy. You know, it's a remin reminiscent of the, the last time we saw her. Remember the last Earl Anthony Medford Classic? She was the runner up to Wendy McPherson. Wendy McPherson. String of strikes late, Stephanie Nation gets up in the 10th frame, needs a hit, and goes wide right again, leaves a washout. This time, another washout, one, two, seven, eight. And what a bad time to have this happen to you. Already had an open frame in the sixth, flirting with one here in the ninth. Come on, give me four. Gets it! Wow, that's a lucky break, too, because that was wide again. I promise you she wasn't trying to shoot that spare that way. You want to try to get the ball over into the one-two. In any event, it's still a spare. Watch this. That's right of the head pin. Nice break. Still has a five-pin lead. Linda Barnes, on the other hand, working on a strike. Can she double up and get a hit on this right lane? No strikes on this right lane for Barnes so far. Until now. Boy, Rob, it really looks like the last two shots, she started to get more aggressive. She said, you know what? Let me bring a little, and she did. I'll tell you what, the one thing that you can do when the lanes get hard is you can just pick up the speed and go more direct. And that looks exactly like what Linda Barnes has done. She now takes the lead and can shut out Stephanie Nation here in the 10th frame. She grew up about 30 minutes from here in Concord, California. Went to San Jose State for four years, just, just down the road. A lot of family and friends here cheering her on. Push, 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 push. And just when she had the chance to close it out, she goes through the nose. Watch her hand get around the side here early. Causes the ball to go right through the face. Pays the price. Do something cool. It closes with an open frame in the tent. She will sit and watch, but this one is Nations for the taking. Stephanie Nation needs a mark in the tenth frame. Nice birthday present, belated birthday present for Nation. A mark to win. Barnes watches. Hang on, hang on. Yeah! yeah. And that's all she wrote. Nation bold for so many years with Barnes on Team USA, telling us yesterday how much she looks up to Linda and still gets butterflies when she's around her and bowling against her. Boy, and this is redemption. She goes with the high hard one, right for one three pocket, all 10 in the pit. When you need a mark in the 10th frame, that's the best kind. Strike number five now. I'm on bad Graham, I love you guys. I wish you were here.
She won the Pepsi Viper Championship in Omaha last season, taking down Michelle Feldman, 225-200, and about three in a row to close out. There's your high score of the day, oh, by the oh way. Oh, my God. Thank a you for coming by. This was amazing. Hey, everybody at home, love you guys. One piece of hardware has been handed out. We'll get you properly prepped for the uninterrupted men's final when we return to the PBA on ESPN. I was 13 years old and I was sitting behind the counter at uh, my mom and my dad's Bowen Center and I was kind of eating some french fries and a burger and I was watching Earl Anthony uh, bowl on television and I looked up to my mom and I said, Mom, I'm gonna be a pro bowler when I grow up. I'm gonna bowl that guy, I'm gonna beat that guy. And here at the Buckeye Lanes, little Norm Duke on the left. At only 5'6", 122 pounds, going against a man who has won more tournaments, more money, in professional bowling, the long history of this great game, Earl Anthony, who will be shooting first. I'm 18 now. First time ever on television. My very first game on television against Earl Anthony. My mom's in the crowd. She's on the front row. I'll never forget. Pew. ABC Sports, it was great. Loved it. And, uh, and I won. You know, he's not with us anymore, but he's with me. He's with my family. Everyone in my family knows what, what he means to me. A wonderful memory courtesy of Norm Duke as we continue to honor the all-time great Earl Anthony here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl as our continuing coverage of the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic rolls on. Coming up next, the men's final uninterrupted, but first, the Geico Championship recap. Randall? Well, Rob, I can pretty much sum up the entire Geico All right. with one simple message, Miss Sparrows. Okay. Sean Rash did it a couple of times against Mike Pachuga. Mike Pachuga ends up beating him 188 to 183. You add up to two missed pairs, 22 pins. The next match was pretty much the same thing, except for Mike Wolf with the solid eight in the seventh. He did whip that split in the tenth. Anthony LaCaz only one open frame. Kind of a battle of attrition, so to speak, the entire day. So LaCaz getting set to take on Machuga in our men's final. Who? has the advantage. Clearly experience is in favor of Machuga, but you like the way everything's kind of shaping up for LaCaze today. Yeah, I think it's a coin toss. I mean, you're right. The experience goes towards Mike Machuga, but there's something about Anthony LaCaze that I really like. And, you know, the one thing I can promise you is in this title match, he will not be afraid. Now, we've been talking all day about the one a day, more of what matters to you fan question, and it is in the books, and it's directed to you, Randall. Let's have it. All right, comes from Stockton, California, Dave Bowles, and PBA has a long history here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. What was your best finish here, my friend? You know, it was so long ago, I think it was, I think my best finish here was eighth or ninth, but I, I always loved bowling in this tournament. I, I loved it because, one, it was close to home. I was living in Central California at the time, too. The hotel's right next door. It's a nice perk. Great great fans, it was a great venue, and of course it, it had Earl's, Earl Anthony's name on it. See Bill O'Neill in the jeans and the black shirt next to his longtime buddy, Anthony Lacaz, providing some advice as Lacaz, Team Money, gets set for his first ever title match on TV. On the backside, we go commercial free with the men's final, Machuga versus Lacaz. Glad you're back with us as we get set for our men's title match of the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. You'll see it in its entirety, commercial free. And on your left, Susie, Susie Anthony, the wife of the late Earl Anthony. And on the right, Mike Anthony, Earl Anthony's son. We had a great chat with Susie yesterday. We really did. You got into it with her about her shoes. She brought it up. She's got some great shoes that have ham on it. She's got the four strikes, <laughs> and she brought it up, not me. I, I'm sure. Earl's doing some rolling around right now that we're even discussing that with his wife, but she was awesome. We asked her about who, who she follows. She says, yeah, I, I still got a soft spot for all the lefties, but she told me this today. She's like, hey, hey, you remember you asked me who, who I'm watching? 
she said, I, w I was watching Richie Allen this week, and I really like the way he bowled. I got to say, Richie Allen and Susie Anthony are two people you wouldn't expect to see in the same building. Yeah, odd couple. Oh, man. She's great. I really like yeah. my time hanging out with her. We begin our men's title match. Mike Machuga on the left lane. <laughs> Through the nose, gets a late kick. Look at a, a hint of loft there. Yeah, now, and, and that's what the players did this week. Once they got as far left as they could get, the only way to keep the ball right at the head pin was to give it some air time. An interesting fact, the last winner of the 1992 Earl Anthony Championship. Last time it was bowled here in this this establishment. I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Last mm -hmm. time it was here in 1992, the winner, Mike Shady, who just happens to be Mike Machuga's brother-in-law. <laughs> Anthony Lacaze up now, the last to win a title after advancing from the TQR round. Rhino Page, March of 08 in Norwich, Connecticut, one of my favorite venues on the tour. Cause gets them all to drop. We asked him what he learned when he was on TV last year in Hammond, and he said, you know, valuable lesson, one shot at a time. And I said, don't, don't be cliche with me, but it's true. Got to slow things down, because this goes fast when you're on TV. So you take a look at the fair breakdown of our men's title match and experience, obviously, in the corner of Mike Machuga. A lot on the line for Anthony Lacaze. Birth in the Tournament of Champions next week for him if he were to win a full-time exemption next season. I think an interesting note, you know, when, when we first saw him last season, because of you and I, he picked up a new sponsor. It just happens to be Steve Jarris's PBA champion, Steve Jarris's old sponsor, Tom Sims. Gave him a call and said, hey, Anthony, you need a sponsor? I'm your guy. Cause picks up that single pin spare. He also signed his first contract this week with Vice. No incentives, though, because he didn't sign before this tournament started. So to our friends at Vice, if he wins, do the right thing. Well, give this guy the bonus check that he deserves. Good folks at Vice. I'm sure they'll take care of him. Once again, Vice, do the right thing. <laughs> take care okay. of Anthony Lacoste. Don't, don't let me get the boys at the patio, T-Max boys in your grill, Vice, you don't want that. So Lacaz sits down, strike spare. Machuga to begin the second. Standing in front of the ball return. Catch. Boom! Gets them all. You know, the other issue that you have to talk about in this title match is how much his wrist is going to affect him. Well, he's also bowling with some emotion. His grandfather, Bernie Heverly, just told him this week that he only has one to two months to live due to cancer. Mike says he is my biggest fan. And he's, he's pretty much the reason I got involved in bowling. It was his bowling center that I grew up in. Uh, my grandmother is the one who convinced uh, my father, my brother-in-law, and my grandfather to, uh, to invest the money in me to get on tour. And since then, my, uh, Grumpy has been my, my biggest fan. He tunes in every squad every week, always watching, and uh, he's a special, special guy. He means a lot to me. I'm sure it would mean a lot to him. Things are starting to heat up here in the championship match, Rob. Got some strikes going. I feel a little life. Big, I feel energized. Big tone with the strike there in the third. Just going back to Bernie Heverly, Machuca's grandfather. He owned Frontier Lanes in Erie, Pennsylvania, which is essentially where Machuca grew up in that center. Lacaz working on a strike to begin the fourth. Five, he leaves. Boy, it, that shot right there 
just shows you how tough, how demanding, how unforgiving the oil pattern is. That wasn't that far to the right, but enough to leave the two, four, five. And, and we're talking inches. Anytime you see players of this caliber struggle to shoot 200, you know the lane conditions are brutal. Good pickup. Just one strike on that left lane across the day from the cause. And he will have to finish on that left lane. Third top 20 finish and second top five in as many weeks for Machuga, right by the ball return. Now he has to adjust the length of his steps and then time it up, get the ball in the swing at the right time, watch the little steps to start. Ah, should have pushed the button. Well, he wanted a re-rack and then decided against it. A pretty good shot there to lead the 10 pin. I was listening to Mike Machugan warmups prior to going on for this title match, and he said, I got the left lane. The right lane is all about just making really good shots. Single pin spares have been vital today. Machuga picks that one up. Again, a big timing change as we take a look at Ted Hoffman co-proprietor here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. I've known Ted, I've known Teddy for a long, long time. PBA Hall of Famer, just a great guy. He knows how to run a tournament. That's why you had the fans you had this week. That's why their programs was, were a sellout. And that's why the players love coming to Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. Machuga in the fifth on the left lane. Backs off. Something in the crowd, I think, caught his attention. Just a little too much movement. Hey, at least it wasn't me or you. <laughs> Full house here at Dublin, California. Mike Machuga, native of Erie, PA, with the lead. Big loft. Looks like that loft is is increasing. Good shots, Michael. Good shots. We're not talking Robert Smith-esque loft. Not yet. Watch the airtime here. Now, here's the thing. If, if you don't loft it, that ball's in the left gutter when he lays it down. So you gotta get some air under it. Lead at eight. Lacaz steps up in the fifth. Best finish the season till this week was 24th at the season opening Motor City Open. Here he is in the fifth, the cause. That one a shade shy of Brooklyn. Anthony Lacaz not near as deep on the lane. As Mike Machugan, you can see what happens when he misses in. That ball has no chance of holding long. This is a guy who's bowling qualifiers every week. He cashed in every event but one this season. He's on the road and rooming now with Bill O'Neill. And you can just kind of see the knowledge and the confidence in this young man every week kind of growing and adding to it. And here he is in his first ever title match, down nine to Mike Machuga as we begin the sixth. Here's a guy who told us yesterday he still doesn't know his specs. Yeah, I can't remember how to fill out his spec sheets. He doesn't know the numbers for his span and pitches. Just give him time. And leaves the 10 pin. He flew into San Francisco and the plan was to meet Bill O'Neill at the rental car place. O'Neill had booked the rental car, but under um, the cause is name. The guy says, hey, you got a credit card? He's like, no, I got a debit card. Well, 
you have a return on your No, I don't. They wouldn't give it to him because he didn't have a credit card. <laughs> so you had to sit around and wait for Bill O'Neill. So the goal this week, get a credit card. And get some credit on that credit card. A $25,000 winning check will help that cause. Let's check out the move that Mike Machuga has made. Now here's where he was playing his first match. Go around the eighth board, although that was a whip right. Check out the big move here, lofting it, playing around the 32nd board. Huge move. Yeah. Right next to the ball return, right in front of it. Plants almost in the gutter. Brings the tent. Awfully tough to strike. And that was over the lane with that rack. Come on, knock it over. Mike Machuga has to finish on the right lane. The last two shots on the right lane, 10 pin, 10 pin. But he's managing this game nicely. A four pin, a double, a 10 pin, a nine pin, and another 10 pin. And he's clean through six. Randy, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's still time for you and others to sign up for the PBA's Fantasy Bowling League. You can play against all other PBA fans, or maybe you can form your own private group. First points in the league will Not be awarded further. for the PBA Tournament of Champions next week. So head on over to PBA.com and sign up today before you check out of your hotel room. Okay. Maybe you and I could form a league. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Knuckles. In the seventh. Uh oh, said Machuga. Uh oh, say 10 pins. Yeah, and that's become a common theme out here every week when we hear, uh oh, it's usually yeah, 10 in the know pit. I had that much hold. You hear what he just said? He said, wow, I didn't know that lane had that much hold. That's a good sign for a right hander playing that deep. He knows he's got a little bit of tug on that left lane. It's too bad he's not finishing the match on that left lane. So Machuga sits with a nine pin lead. Big stretch of frames here for Lacoste. Oh, He's on the right lane, the only lane he has struck on here in the title match. Well, he didn't like that one as soon as let, he let go of it. And he knew that was headed for the Brooklyn. But Brooklyn has not been a bad place to visit today. Well. It, you know, Mike Machuga sitting there watching that ball go Brooklyn, and the last thing Mike wants to see is a Brooklyn strike against him. And as a player, the last thing you want to do is throw a Brooklyn strike against your opponent. And you know, part of the missed spares that we saw in the earlier matches is a lack of concentration due to trying to process all of the information and figure out a way to get your ball to hit the pocket. Well, you hear it all the time in, in various sports where the coaches say, if you're thinking, you're not playing. Just go out and play. Right. Do what you're comfortable doing. If your head is racing around, you're not going to make the play. You're not going to make the right adjustment. Fine line. You got to dance here on the PBA Tour. Begin the eighth. Lacaz down 10. Needs a strike here on a very difficult left lane for him. Get some late wood to fall, which yeah. will help his cause. It almost left a 4-5 split. And when you're, if you're Mike Machuga, you really like what you're seeing right now because Anthony Lacaz is not nearly as deep as Mike Machuga is. And, and Mike's sitting there saying, all right, well, he's not as far left as I am, so he's not going to be burning up my hold area. I might have another good look. One last shot on that left lane. Mike Machuga just looking to set it up with a strike in the eighth. Fifth consecutive spare for Lacaz. He takes a seat. Machuga pops up. Three strikes for Machuga here in the title match. Only one of them coming on the right lane. Remember, he said prior to the start of this championship match, I just have to make great shots on the right lane. The left lane, I've got some room. Some real issues at Thunderbolt, the World Series of Bowling, but has figured it out the last couple weeks. Uh oh. Help, 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 help. Okay. 
Huge. Leaves, leaves the two. And a, and a couple of nice breaks for both players going light. Here's the loft. Maybe a little excessive. The ball just pushes too far down the lane, but a nice break and only leaving the two pin. Now cover the spare. Strike in the ninth and set up your tenth frame. Managing very nice so right frame, but it keeps going frame. And that's what today has required. Managing your game. If you get in the 200s, pat yourself on the back. Only one person has gotten in the 200s today, and that's Stephanie Nation, a 201. And she won the woman's title. Remember, Mike Munchuga in his soundbite, he said, you know, I've got a lot of tools, but I'm not sure how to manage the toolbox. He said that to us yesterday in our, our meetings, and you know, he's got a lot of friends, Norm Dukes, in the world who have a lot of advice, and he gets to learn from them. Now he just needs to put the pliers in the right place. He's the wrench over here. Using the loft right now. Oh, that's a big drop. That is a huge drop. Yeah, <laughs> the Chukes looks upstairs for some divine intervention as the 10 drop late. That could have been a mammoth difference maker. Well, this may be the biggest break of the tournament for Mike Machuga. Staring at the 4-10. The 10 goes late. A spare here. He will remain clean through nine frames. His sixth single pin spare conversion of this title match. Now here's the deal. What adjustments will Anthony Lacaz make in the ninth and tenth frame? He has not been close to the pocket the last two shots. The good news for him, his only two strikes in this title match have come on this right lane. Let's see what team money has right now. If he strikes out in ninth and tenth frame, he'll shoot 216. Mike Machuca can strike out in the tenth frame to shoot 216. Mm. One down for T Money. Hey there, Mr. Big Shot. No matter what he does, though, Mike Machuca knows he can't be shut out. Big shot here. Three reps sets up the tenth frame. That's just ten back. Cause asked for a re rack as he buys some time as he gets set to roll on the left lane. Just one strike on the left lane today for Lacaz. He wants everything to be perfect for this 10th frame. Alea, his wife, watching in the background. for T Money. Man, how good was that shot? Watch this guy matriculate the ball down the lane now when he needs it most. He has to come up with a big double to tie the match up, and he does just that. Talked about what kind of an adjustment he would make in the ninth and tenth frame. You're looking at it. He's playing with some emotion now, too. We haven't seen much positive emotion out here today. But he's not, he's not overly geeked out, okay? It's just enough. Good use of the term geeked out, Randy, by the way. Thank you. Second effort in the tenth for Lacoste, working on a double. Make it a triple. Three-bagger, lead change, a strike here, and he could do no worse than force a roll-off. Rob, it's one thing to have the physical talent to be able to bowl out here on tour. It's another to have the mental fortitude, the maple moxie, to win. This kid's got it. We talked about it in the open. We talked about it in the on-camera. This guy's got the maple moxie. He steps up and throws three of the prettiest shots you've ever seen on one of the most demanding lane conditions we've been a part of. But 
puts the pressure on Machuga with the 214. There's his father in attendance. Marty watching. Mike Machuga needs two strikes and nine to win for the third time in his career. Anything less, Anthony Lacaz is going to be your brand new champion on the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour. And he will be at the Tournament of Champions next week. Just one strike on the right lane all day for Mike Machuga. Needs two and then nine for the title. Lacaz watches from the sideline. Yes, a late kick and a drop of the four pin and Machuga still alive. Well, I'll tell you what, Rob, as soon as he let go of this, I started shaking my head because I thought it was inside of target. It was just a fraction. And there's a right-hander's best friend when you need a hit. Trip four. One more of those and nine. Mike Machuga's victory. The breaks have gone Machuga's way. This is not saying he didn't earn it, he didn't deserve it, but he has had the pins fall when he needs them to. Cause watches. Machuga. Mandatory strike here for him in the 10th. The patio is rocking as T Money moves on. I don't think it's hit him yet, Randy. Well, he's holding it in and bottling it up. Happy birthday, Mario. Happy birthday, brother. Wolfpack. Uh, great moment in that young man's career. Anthony Lacaz wins his first Lumber Liquidator PBA Tour title and with it, an invite to next week's second major of the season. The TOC will be back to wrap it up. After this, Machuga falls in the 10th. Lacaz, your titleist. Anthony Memorial Classic is brought to you by Lumber Liquidator, hardwood flooring for less. By Atonic, visit www.atonic.com slash bull. By GoRV, visit GoRV.com for a free video. Go affordably, GoRV. And by One A Day Men's 50 Plus Advantage, the multivitamin with more of what matters. Glad you're back with us live from Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl and the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic goes to the young man who now has an exemption and a berth in next week's TOC, Anthony Lacaz, courtesy of a 214-206 victory over Mike Machuga. And your winner, standing guy, lane side with Randy Peterson. Thanks, Rob. Anthony, boy, you sure made that look easy. It was not easy. It wasn't easy. I'm trying to get it off my hand. <laughs> what, were you, what was going through your mind when you were sitting back there watching Mike Machuga? He steps up. You know exactly what he needs. He leaves the ring in 10 and your whole life just changed. What went through your mind? Well, I wanted him to throw the ball the best he can, and um, I was wishing him luck the whole time. How's your feeling, or what you, what's your feeling on going to the Tournament of Champions next week? Awesome, I can't wait to get there. Vegas, here I come. All right, buddy, I'll see you there. Congratulations, Anthony. Thank you. Lacaz told us yesterday he'll see us Brent. in Vegas at the TOC, and the man Backs up his words with the 214-206 title victory over Mike Machuga. Next week, we are in Vegas. Live coverage, one Eastern, right here on ESPN of the second major of the year, the PBA Tournament of Champions. Lacaz with a three-bagger in the ninth and tenth.
which helped propel him over Mike Machuga and earn him his first ever Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title. For Randy Peterson and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next Sunday in Vegas.